At this time, we're going to bring to the floor none other than Mr. David Zachar this morning. Good morning, David. How are you? Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I um, want to turn the floor over to you because I saw a post that you put on Facebook about the church and 501c3, and I want to give you an opportunity to share that with us today because there are some things we need to know. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right, I'll be happy to, but I have a request of you because we are going to touch on a very controversial topic, and we're going to make the devil mad. We're going to step, and we're going to stomp on his toes today. And if you would, would you say a special prayer uh, to bind the enemy to uh, all evil, demonic, uh, unclean spirits that may try to come and stop this message that I'm about to deliver? Would you do a, a special prayer and see demons out in the name of Jesus? Yes, yes. Father God, in the name Amen. of Jesus, we come before you this morning, Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you would rebuke the devour for our sake today. Father, you gave us binding and loosing power. And God, today we bind up every evil and hindering and negative spirit that's coming our way today in the name of Jesus. And Father, we cast it back to the pits of hell, never to return again in the name of Jesus. And today we lose understanding, we lose wisdom, we lose your word being clearly clarified to your people, and that God, they would get what you have for them, whatever your word set out for them today, that they would get it in the name of Jesus, and that no one would hold anything against David, because God, if it's your word, then we want to honor what you say, and we know that we belong to you. We don't belong to the government, but God, if we give our will to the government, we then we belong to them because you give us free will, and we can pick and choose. But, Lord, today we choose you. We choose what's right. We choose what's holy. So, Father, again, we ask today that you would rebuke the devourer for our sake, and we plead the blood of Jesus against anything that's not of you this day coming our way. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen and right, amen. David, the floor is yours. All right, I want to begin by saying we serve a powerful, mighty, awesome, living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Here we are in the last moments, the final moments, the end times, the end days, and God is waking up the church. He is shaking up the church. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and the bible one see free that's how i want to begin today's uh, broadcast and i want to thank you for having me on and i have just been filled with the holy spirit this morning and this song from this uh once great country the united states of america just has been ringing in my ears and i want to share this with you Oh, beautiful, for mm. spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesty, beyond the fruited plains. America, America, God mm. shed his grace on thee. But so we've kicked God out of this once great country. We've removed prayer from the school. We've removed Jesus as the head of the church, and we serve a paper god, a demigod. I can only imagine if the Apostle Paul was mm. with us today. There would be a lot of correcting going on. I want to begin by saying I am an ordained minister. I'm a pastor, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the head of my church. I came out, I walked out of the 501 and C3. I'm not giving any legal advice of any kind. I'm not an attorney at law. I'm not a lawyer. But I will be sharing with you some information from the former head of the IRS tax division, 
Attorney Marcus Owens of Washington, D.C. Now, before I begin, do you have any, any questions for me? Or? Because the church doesn't know. I mean, the church has just been going on following traditions and, uh, I hate to say, doctrines of men. It's been handed down and passed down from the pulpit, and uh, I think the church needs to understand the truth today. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I have no questions uh, at this time, and no one has asked in the chat room or anything just yet. I guess as you go on with your message, maybe at the ending. But I wanted to uh, say this to you. I I do appreciate your understanding because of this. I know that even back with Saul and David, uh, they chose Saul over God. And any time we're choosing right. things over God, it, it can't end right. No way. So at this time, I'm going to turn the floor back over to you. Okay, thank you. We look around at the church today, and a lot of us, uh, are shaking our head and we can't understand uh, why we're not uh, hearing, uh, we're not having uh, the pastors up on the pulpit teaching repentance, repent, repent in the end days. No one's covered the book of Revelation. We look around and we see a rainbow church. We see homosexuality running rampant. It's like we're, we are in the the days of Noah, the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, same-sex marriage. And we wonder what happened. Well, what happened is I'm going to recite from um, Marcus Owen. He is the former head of the tax division for the IRS, and he uh, currently is uh, defending a church uh, in California against the 501c3. I'm going to try to put it plain and simple. There came a time, the church has always been, tax exempt when you are the church we are the church jesus is the head when you know the devil satan that serpent that manipulator that trickster um oh my goodness you know he has he is out to seek kill and destroy and that's what he's doing with the church today and i have to wonder if he's not just sitting back and just uh enjoying the time that he's had with the church because Jesus has always been the head of the church. When you file a 501c3 or tax exemption, exemption, the church has to understand the church has always been tax exempt. Going back in time, back, uh, I, some of us will remember uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was uh, the president of the United States, I believe right after Kennedy was assassinated. But, but before that time, in the early 1950s, the church was getting real outspoken. It was sticking its nose into uh, political matters and politics. And I'm going to share with you what took place behind closed doors in Washington, D.C. They had to find a way. They were getting very concerned because the church uh, was getting real outspoken in uh, uh, politics. And they needed to find a way to shut up the church. So then Lyndon Baines Johnson uh, came up with the idea. He says, you know, the church is just putting their nose where it doesn't belong. They're getting involved in our business here with the government and the state. He said they're already tax exempt. But you know what? They're, they're so ignorant. They don't even realize. They, I guess they don't read their constitution. Um, they're already tax exempt, but let's tell them that they file a corporation uh, that we will give them tax exempt status. And you know, they're probably uh, ignorant enough, but they'll fall for it. And we did. So, what I want to share with you is from uh, the former head of the IRS tax division, the former, not the current, the former head of the IRS tax division. Uh, some questions that were put to Marcus Owens, Washington, D.C. Must churches obtain official 501c3 status from the Internal Revenue Service to be exempt from taxation? His answer is no. Churches are automatically exempt from taxation, according to Marcus Owens, Washington, D.C. Must churches be 501c3 for the members' tithes, donations? And this is where a lot of people are uh, worried about. 
churches to be 501c3 for their members' tithes, donations, and gifts to be tax deductible. Again, no, according to uh, Martha's Owens, and to IRS regulations readily accessible to the public. And this goes on to talk about what happened with, uh, um, I believe it was back in 1954 when uh, the church got a lot of spoken. So they pulled a fast one. The church has already been uh, tax exempt. So why do we do this now today? What we're doing is um, we've removed uh, Jesus as the head. If you are a 501c3 um, and you're doing this because you believe that you have to be, uh, you're not a church. Church, wake up. You are no longer a church. You've given up your freedom. You've given up uh, your constitutional rights. Uh, and you have now become a corporation. And Jesus is no longer the head of your church. Like it or not, you may not want to hear this. But you've kicked Jesus out, just like God has been kicked out of this country, prayer kicked out of school. You've removed. This is how clever and how crafty the enemy, Satan, is. You have removed Jesus as the head of your church. There's no doubt about it. There's no two ways around it. And you've made, uh, you serve a paper God. You serve the state and you serve the government. And they control what you can and what you cannot preach on. And you've done it. All for the love of money. You want that tax exemption when you're already tax exempt. Um, I think a lot of people listening today remember way back in the early church, in the in the, in uh, even my grandmother's time, people would have a home church. Now, recently, we hear on the news where uh, pastors are being uh, arrested for holding having a home church, for holding service in their home. Now, do you know, can anyone tell me why? Why have these pastors been arrested and put in jail and, and are serving time? The reason is what what we hear on the news is how everyone's rallying, rallying to their support and trying to find a way to help get them out of jail. They did nothing wrong. All they did was have a home church. They did something wrong. They didn't disobey God. They disobeyed their master, the state. They, what you didn't know is they're 501c3. Mm -hmm. if, if you have a home church today and you are not 501c3, no one's knocking on your door. No one's going to come and arrest you. They were arrested because they broke the rule. You don't serve God. You don't serve Jesus. You serve, you serve the state. And there are rules and guidelines that you have to follow. You've given up. When you file a 501c3, you've given up all of your freedoms and all of your rights. And they they are like a dictator. Uh, you're bowing down to Pharaoh again, and God is crying out uh, to let his people go. We need to come out. We need to come out of the 501c3. All right. Stay tuned for part two. I'll try to get it uploaded as soon as I can. God bless. Leave me comments, everyone.